four benefits, four benefits of receiving this Christmas gift into your life at this Christmas time. You see, we rejoice in this Christmas gift, first of all, because we can lose our loneliness at Christmas time. Now, after all of these years of uh, pastoring and living my life, I've come to believe that everyone sooner or later is going to experience some bits and pieces of loneliness in their life. If you have lost a loved one this last year, which several of you have, there is a feeling of loss. There is a feeling of emptiness in your heart. And it affects the joy. It, it affects the fullness you experience at Christmas. Susan and I over the years have experienced this several times. We have lost parents. We have lost brothers. We have lost grandchildren. We have lost nephews. We have lost close friends. We have uh, lost uncles and nieces as have many of you. They're just kind of a hole in your heart when you lose someone that is close to you. It knocks the wind out of your sails. Maybe you're lonely at this Christmas time because your family is far away. Or maybe someone close to you has just walked out of your life. And so you feel deserted. If you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling abandoned, if you're feeling forsaken, I want you to know that God is with you. He is close by. He is by us all the time. And all we have to do is to tune into him and make him a part of our lives. You see, Christ was born into this world to give us his presence and his comfort in our life. And that's what takes away our loneliness at Christmas time. In fact, God said in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, I will never leave you or abandon you. Now, other people may walk out of your life. A parent may walk out of your life. A husband, a wife, a child, or someone who was real close to you. But God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You see, when you accept God's presence into your life, it first of all helps you out. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41 and 10. Don't worry, don't worry, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, because I am your God. I will make you strong. See those words? I will help you. I will support you. Don't worry, I will be with you. None of us uh, knows for sure what will happen to us as individuals in 2021. In fact, we didn't know what would happen to us a year ago when we were about to enter the year of 2020. But if you accept Christ, God's Christmas gift to you, I can tell you one thing, whatever you're going to go through, you will not have to go through it alone because the living Savior will walk through it with you. When God is with you, you lose your fear. You lose your aloneness. Also, God's Christmas gift will calm you down in life. The Bible says in Psalm 4, I will lie down in peace and sleep. For though I am alone, O Lord, you will keep me safe. When God is with you, you lose your fear. He calms you down. So you may be alone at Christmas time. This is a strange year. Maybe you can't get together with family or friends like you normally do. You could be alone. But you don't have to be lonely because the Christmas gift Jesus Christ has promised to be with you. Being alone is sometimes unavoidable. You see, people are going to leave us through life. Some people die. People grow up and change locations. But you don't have to be lonely. You can talk to God. You can read his word and let God speak to you during these times. Let his presence in to comfort you 
to calm you, to take away the fear. Let God cheer you up. The Bible says in Psalm 16 and verse 11, Your presence fills me with joy. If you're feeling low, if you're feeling discouraged, if you feel depressed today, God's presence can comfort you. God's presence can calm you down. God's presence can give you hope in a world that looks hopeless. He can bring joy into your life regardless of the circumstances you may be going through or you will go through in the future. So invite Christ in, the Christmas gift from God, and be released from your loneliness in life. The second gift of receiving Christ is that you get another chance. You get another chance. The truth of the matter is that most people, if they had it all to do over again, if they had it all to do over again, there would be a lot of things in their life that they would probably do differently than what they have done. You see, no one bats a thousand all the time. We've all made mistakes. We've all had faults. We've all had failures along the way. There are some things we would do differently if we could, if we had another chance to do them differently. You see, the good news about Christmas is that God loves to give people a second chance in life. Several years ago, there was a football player that played for the Denver Broncos. He kicked extra points, and he did quite well. He was very successful. But one time, in an important game, he missed a field goal, a field goal that would have won the game for the team that he played for. He went to the sidelines. He was a Christian. He bowed his head and prayed, Lord, please give me <laughs> a second chance. And you know what happened? In a little while, the opposing team fumbled that ball at exactly the same spot where he had tried to kick a field goal and miss. He was able to go in in just the closing seconds of the game and kick the field goal, and his team won the game. And then he wrote a book called A Second Chance. A Second Chance. You see, God loves to give a second chance to people. In fact, that's why Jesus came into the world, to give a second chance. That's the second part of God's Christmas gift to you. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. Right thinking and right living, a clean slate. Wouldn't you like to have a clean slate? A fresh start. All come from God by way of Jesus Christ. God wants to give you a clean slate. He wants to take the eraser to all of the bad things that you've ever done in your life, and he'd just like to erase them from your life. Wouldn't that be okay? All the mistakes that you've made, all of the unkindness that you have been a part of, he wants to take the eraser and eliminate all the bad things that have been a part of your life. All those selfish acts, all the sins, on the whiteboard of your life. He wants to erase them. That is God's Christmas gift to us. Listen to this verse. I don't think it's on your worksheet. God did it all for us. Out of his sure generosity, that means his grace. He put us in a right standing with himself. He got us out of the mess we were in. Have you ever been in a mess? Well, there's someone that can get you out of the mess that you're in. He gets us out of the mess we're in and restores us to where he always wanted us to be. And he did it all through Jesus Christ, God's Christmas gift to you. Years ago, a young lady came to my office. She had become pregnant at a young age. And then she had gotten a, uh, uh, 
she had gotten an abortion. Because of the guilt that came from that activity, she was sinking lower and lower and lower in life. She thought that she would just have to live the rest of her life in the penalty box. But you know what? She discovered that Jesus Christ, God's Christmas gift to us, was there to forgive her sins, come into her life, and make a brand new person out of her. My dear friends, Jesus Christ was born in the world so that you wouldn't have to live your life in the penalty box forever. <laughs> Here's what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. God will forgive. Do you see that? Some of your failures? No. God will forgive all your failures and sins. He did this by erasing the charges that were brought against us by the laws that God established. He took these charges away by nailing them to the cross. In other words, the cross where Jesus died. The gift of forgiveness is ours. When we come to Christ by faith, who came to earth at, on Christmas, what am I saying? I'm saying God wants to give you, you, a second chance, a new chance. He wants to wipe the slate clean. He wants to give you a totally new way of life. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 5, 17. Anyone who belongs to Christ becomes a new person. In other words, the old has passed away. The past is forgotten, and everything becomes new. This is why Christmas is so important. This is why we go out of our way to celebrate at Christmas. We put lights on our houses, decorations in the church. We take a day off. Why would we do all those things? Because God gave us a gift. And his name is Jesus Christ, who can forgive our sins and give us a, ch a second chance. That's why billions of people are going to celebrate Christmas around the world. First, we get God's presence, saying, you'll never have to be alone again. Do you feel alone? Have you ever felt lonely? Do you ever feel like you were forgotten? Well, the presence of Jesus Christ can bring you comfort. He can walk with you through that difficult time. And then he says, I'm going to give you the gift of pardon. I'm going to give you a fresh start in life. I'm going to give you the chance to start all over and be born again. There's a third benefit that happens when you accept God's Christmas gift. He gives you a reason for living. He gives you a reason for living. Did you know that much of the world just exists? They don't really have a reason for living. Oh, they get up, they go to work. But you see, when Christ comes into our life, he gives us a purpose. He gives us a reason for living, a, a new direction. It seems that uh, we often just drift through life. We go from job to job, maybe from relationship to relationship, not ever really knowing where we're heading. I think one of the problems about life is we start out and then we begin to drift. We begin to drift. And when we do that, we let other people begin to decide what our purpose for living is. It could be people we run around with, party with, or whatever the case may be. Well, they begin to direct our life. We uh, try to find uh, our life in cars, clothes, salary, other status symbols. 
We use drugs and alcohol. But look at what the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Isn't that a great verse? It's in Christ we find out who we are and what we're living for. Long before we heard of Christ, he had his eye on us and designed us for his glorious living. Did you know that God planned for your life? He had a reason for your existence into this world. Did you know that? Did you know that he planned ahead? Did you know that he even planned when you were in your mother's womb? He planned for your, a purpose for your life, a reason for you to live. You are unique. You are important. Now what happens to us? This drift in life, when other people begin to decide how we're supposed to live our life and who we're supposed to be, it could be parents and friends and teachers and kids. But uh, once they determine our direction instead of God, there's not much fulfillment to life. It doesn't get rid of guilt. It doesn't give us a purpose. When it's determined by others and not God, then life is not very fulfilling. We're stressed out. We live without hope. And we spend our life doing all the wrong things in life. It's only in Christ, only in Christ that we find out our real reason for living. Here in America, we talk about the good life. Well, isn't that Nebraska's uh, slogan? If you're coming back into Nebraska, don't they say, welcome to the good life? You've read that. What in the world does that mean? <laughs> I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. Or maybe I have the goods. If the good life is so good, why are we so dissatisfied? <laughs> why aren't we happier? Why do we keep searching? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you were made for the better life. And the better life is the reason for your existence and for your living in this world. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and give you life to the full. He's the one that moves us from just existing to really living. The truth is at this Christmas time, you might not agree with this, but it's true, you don't need more money. You need more meaning. We don't need more possessions. We don't need more things. We already got more things that we can take care of. We don't even need more success. What we need is significance in our life. We need to be able to get up in the morning and have a reason for living our life regardless of what has happened, regardless of what we are going through. We need to feel like life really matters. And I'm living the life that God wants me to live. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 4, The Lord made everything for his own purpose. Everything. Well, that's me. <laughs> that's you. He made everything for a purpose, for a reason. We don't need more things. We just need God's purpose for living. We find God's purpose by opening up our life and talking to him. When it comes to talking to God, we have to go directly to the source. We need to go to the Bible, the owner's manual. We need to read it. 
We need to let it become a part of our life. Because he's the inventor. He is the designer of our life. He made every one of us for a specific reason. Look at Colossians 3.11. In this new life, one's nationality or race or education or social position is unimportant in this new life that God wants to give you. Whether a person has Christ is what matters. He is equally available to everyone. You see that? Did you know that a lot of people think they're not good enough for Jesus to have be a part of their life? Do you see what this verse is saying? He's available to everyone. Regardless of what you've done, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of your nationality, He's for everybody. Amazing grace for every race, someone said. I like that. He died on the cross for everyone. Everyone. Somehow, if our world, even in America, if we could understand that and put that into practice, it'd change our society. You see, Jesus is the only answer, not politics, not education, not science, only Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can change the heart. He's the only one that can change the mainspring of our life, our spirit. When he came, he said, I'm not here to talk about religion. I'm here to talk about a relationship, a relationship with God where his presence removes loneliness, where his presence forgives you and gives you another chance, and where his presence gives you a real reason for living. That's God's Christmas gift to you. Look what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4. Because Jesus was raised from the dead. We've been given a brand new life. You see that? Did you ever want a new life? And have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now. Do you realize when we talk about eternal life, we're not just talking about heaven? We're talking about a new life that begins now. Not just to be forgiven, but to have an inspiration to live a whole new life, to go in a whole new direction. You see, it isn't just heaven. This eternal life, this new life starts right now. The question is, how do we come into possession of this gift, Jesus Christ, that God sent at Christmas time? Well... We have to say yes to God. We don't deserve it. We can't work for it. We have to put our trust in God and say, I want to receive your Christmas gift, Jesus Christ, into my life, the Savior of the world. Here's what the Bible says in Romans six thirteen. Give yourself completely to God, every part of you, to be used for his good purposes. You see, we have to say yes to God. Give yourself to God. Every part of your life needs to be given to him. And then finally, there's a fourth gift from Jesus that God wants to give you at this Christmas time. Another benefit, another benefit to being a Christian, to giving your life to Christ. You get his power and his strength to go on. Almost everyone this year is having a tough time. It is, in some ways, one of the toughest times maybe for our 
generations that are living right now. Nearly every day seems to drain a person of all the strength that they have. It, it seems like we just go home and flop down, maybe in the recliner, and we're out of strength. We're out of power. Our energy alone is just not enough. You see, what, what we need is to plug into God's power. God says, I want you to turn to me for the strength that you need for the living of your life every day. Look at the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Find your source of strength in the grace of Christ Jesus. So God says, if you'll turn to me, if you'll open up your life to me, I can actually put strength into your inner life, into your spirit that goes beyond human strength. We need that. When life throws us around, and it will, when life disappoints us, when life hurts us, when we suffer loss, we need some extra strength if we're going to make it. We need a source of inner strength that comes from God. Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 43, 2. Familiar verses. They're great verses. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I'll be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you're not going to drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you'll not be burned up. God says, I'll be with you. Have you discovered that? Have you discovered God with you? When you're walking through the fire, when you're being oppressed, well, that's what Christmas is all about. I know we like to give gifts. I know we like decorations. We like the music. We like all those things. But that isn't the heart of Christmas. The heart of Christmas is knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Because he's the one that can meet the inner needs of your life. You know, those needs that no one else sees. That's why that first Christmas was called a holy night. For now God would be with us and in us. Have you received God's Christmas gift? Jesus Christ. Are you rejoicing in the gift of Christmas? If not, you can begin today to experience the Savior that was born to save us. Just ask the gift of Christmas, Jesus Christ, to come into your life. Let him drive out your loneliness. Let him give you a second chance, maybe a third chance or a fourth chance. How about that? show you a reason for living, and then give you the strength to go on living your life like it was meant to be lived. Years ago, I sat in a home. Of a lady's life that had been torn to shred by lifestyle, Her husband was in prison. Her children had to be raised. And we were talking about the scripture. We were going through some Bible studies that they were working on. And all at once she said, Well, Pastor, I just wish I could be born again and start all over. 
And I said, well, if that's what you want, I've got good news. That's why Jesus came into the world. That's why he lived his life. That's why he died on the cross. So that you could be born again and start all over. Is that where you're at? Would you, would you just like to start over? Well, God has given us a gift. That's why we celebrate Christmas. And if you would turn to him today, you can start over. Completely over. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, we all may be in different places in our walk, in our search, in our hurts. But we have one who offers us a chance to start over. And if you're at a point somewhere where maybe there's been a failure, a misstep, and you'd like to start over, well, today's the day. Pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I've made a mess of things. I haven't lived the way I should. Would you forgive me? Would you come into my life? Would you give me your presence and your purpose and your power? With heads bowed and eyes closed, I, I would like to ask again today, if somewhere in your walk you felt like you needed to pray that prayer, would you just slip up your hand so that I could see it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord, we pray for these who raised their hand today. Become real in their life. May there be a sense of peace, calmness, and strength as they leave the church today. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.